the EMC Video On Demand Library. Edison also highlighted maintenance tasks as part of their tests. When you look at the results of the EVA, you will notice that they do not specify how long it takes to migrate a LUN from one disk group to another. This is not surprising since the EVA does not offer a feature like Clarion Virtual LUN Migration. So why would users want to migrate a LUN? Let's review a whiteboard discussion. Now we're going to look at LUN migration. So we're going to take our source LUN here, which is RAID 5. We're going to move it. What we do is create a destination LUN, move all the data over to the new LUN in the new configuration. So in this case, our RAID 1.0 is going to be our destination. So I'm going to right click on the source LUN, select Migrate. From amongst the list presented here, I'm going to choose my destination LUN, which is going to be 24. We have a throttle setting, so we can adjust the, the impact, you know, trade off the impact versus the time of completion, so we can make sure that uh, host operations are not impacted too greatly. Click OK. Confirm. And the migration has been kicked off, which we can see indicated in the GUI. So, Gordon, now um, just to understand, the, the host is still available. My application is still up and running? Absolutely. This is, this is done live. We respond to write, writes and reads. And I can migrate from uh, one RAID type to another, correct? You can migrate any LUN or meta LUN to any other LUN or meta LUN in the array. Anything can be different. There's only one restriction, and that is the size of the destination must be the same size or larger. So that's between SATA and ATA drives, different RAID types, different enclosures. Anything is uh, valid. Got it. Now we just uh, saw a little demo or got a taste for how easy it is actually to do a, a non-disruptive it is to do a virtual LUN migration or LUN migration on the Clarion. So obviously we now want to show what, how you could accomplish the same thing, or similar at least, uh, on an EVA. And this is exactly one of the limitations that, you know, when you talk about ease of use, sure, it may be easy to provision a LUN and expand it and do a demand allocated task, but these are tasks that the uh, administrator will face, uh, and this is not quite as easy, and, and HP is not anxious to, to tell the customer this. So what would I do? I have my LUN here, VDisk1, and it is presented to host Leo and Virgo. Um, what I would probably do to follow a similar process to uh, to, to, to the Clarion is, for one, I have to unpresent my host. So what I would actually do before that is bring my application down. Um, remember that on the Clarion, it, it's a transparent uh, process. The uh, application stays up. I have to bring my application down, obviously, before I unpresent the host. I'm going to select all here, unpresent. So I'm going to sever the connection between my underlying storage and the servers. <clears throat> I've accomplished that, and now what I will do is I will create a mirror clone. Again, remember, same here, we have to create a container. If I forget, I have to go out, which I just did. And I again have to remember these uh, parameters. So it's group 1, VRAID 5, 4 gig. I'm going to create a container, 4 gig. Only this time, I'm going to create the container in another disk group. And I can do this for clones. I cannot do this for snaps. That's the one fundamental difference. So the clones can actually reside outside of the disk group. Snaps cannot. So I'm going to migrate. I'm going to create the container where I want the LUN ultimately to end up uh, sitting. Say we have faster drives in disk group one or slower, whichever the use case may be. Remember, VRAID has to match, so I go here, and now I create my container. OK, done. Again, a slightly 
annoying phenomenon occurs, we will go back to the EVA 4000 and let's check what happened. So I have a V disk, this is my source LUN, and it is in group one. The container is in group one. I'm sorry. V disk LUN one is in group. And I want to migrate so the source LUN is in group, in the disk group called group, and the container is in the disk group called group 1. So I'm going to move it now. And the way I would do this is I'm going to create a mirror clone, and I just leave it, that's fine. Select the container that I just created, create it, wait this for this task to complete. It's uh, resyncing and uh, doing uh, its background operations. And again, we made this point earlier. Just because you click it doesn't mean it's um, done. There are perf underlying performance implications that you definitely need to factor in. But as you know, I just severed the relationship to the host, so there will not be an uh, impact to the end user. So let's wait till this process completes. And I think oh, it's almost there. Okay, so now we, we, we created the mirror of VDisk1, and now I'm going to fracture the clone, sever the relationship to its original LUN. After I've done that, I'm going to detach it. And essentially what I'm doing now is I'm converting what was a mirror into a LUN. So this LUN here, which now is in, as you can see, group 1, is identical to this LUN, which was in group. So I just basically copied an image of my LUN over to the destination disk group, if you will. What I would probably do at this point is I would uh, delete the originating or the source LUN. We'll take a minute for that process to complete and rename my mirror because essentially, as you remember, I just wanted to move it, so I'm just going to call it VDIS1. And now my migration is complete. However, I would have to bring the users back online. In other words, I have to present it back to my hosts. Say present disk. And now basically I've accomplished a workaround um, of our virtual LUN migration process. And as you can see, there was a couple of um, takeaways here, right? For one, it took a lot longer, and you really have to kind of think how you're going to uh, accomplish this workaround. And my application went down. And to me, this is ease of use, too. So one great feature that stands out, Virtual LUN, you definitely want to talk about uh, the EVA team or the, the reseller will be hard-pressed to show that um, their workaround is easy. Now, what the, the one thing you also want to keep in mind here, there's no load on the system or there is no, um, you know, you don't really get a sense for some of the underlying, there's no data, there's no, so you don't really get an, uh, a sense for the underlying re, uh, processes that the AV, EVA will do in the background. I just wanted to show you some of the steps involved in doing this. As you were able to see, Clarion offers a wealth of features that dramatically improve daily storage management, features that the EVA does not offer, features like virtual LUN migration. Users can migrate data to a desired RAID group for performance reasons, to change a RAID type, or to move data from fiber channel to ATA drives, all while the application remains online. To accomplish this task on an EVA, you have to use a cumbersome workaround and bring the application down. This is a perfect example as to how Clarion does not only provide ease of use, but extends it into all tasks of daily storage management.